All right then, so here we are back again at making this map. So um, before we continue anything, save as new version so that we can t keep track of what we were doing. And then we want to do this render thing again to keep the progress of the map in check. And there we go. And now if you look at these, all right, this was section underscore zero three. we can start seeing the map really grow right starting to become more and more like what we would expect it to be which is a map so let's continue and now we'll be talking about textures and textures is kind of the same thing like the height map where you paint the texture on top of the terrain so if we would just pick a random texture here, it's just uh, it's a layers instead of splat stackles or props. I'm just going to pick this random texture here. There you go. And then we can paint that just like that onto the terrain. And now we have this alternative dirt right there. And that's roughly the, uh, the entire day idea of textures. Um, in this case, we have a uh, by, uh, yeah, by, to dual bio uh, map where we have this green bit and we have a lot of tundra like ice places and um, so let's see how we can make that work um, let's start with the the simple stuff and that's just working with the cliffs now I'm gonna cheat a little and I'm gonna go to www.textures.com and I'm just gonna try and find a rock texture here that I think looks good to use on cliffs and one of them no that one doesn't particularly look good it's just gonna have to uh, see that one looks interesting asteroid surface beautiful Granite cliff, that looks decent. So let's get this one. And when we do this, we need to add a note to our map description. So let's do that right away. We are here working in version four, new map layers, or this is called the env folder for environment. And in here we want layers. And we're going to copy those maps in here. And this is going to be granite, cliff, or just granite albedo. And this is granite normals. And just to make sure that we are on the uh, same page, let's do that right away. I messaged this to someone a while back. Is it in here? No, is it in here? Uh, I'll write it for you tonight. Did I write it somewhere? Yeah, okay. Did I write it? I did write it. I can't find it, but that's that's fine. Let's go here in textures.com. Then we would like to go to the license, how it works, terms of use, and in here, model, one, this is what we need. There we go. So let's go into the map. Ta -da. One or more textures on this map have been created with photographs from textures.com. These photographs may not be redistributed at fault. Please visit WTextures for more information. We need that when we start using the uh, uh, textures from www.textures.com. That's, that's all we need to add in, so that's, that's great. That's pretty neat. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna be working with Photoshop. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, you can do similar things with GIMP, but I'm not gonna be doing that. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of GIMP. I'm going to tweak these granite rocks here a bit into the, the tone of color that we like to have. So open up, 
actually we can just drag this albedo in here here we go beautiful and this is very green or uh, i mean very brownish rock but we kind of want to match the darker rock that we have here and we can do that going back in here go to uh, browse library dark rock let's search for that and let's just see what we get that's all not particularly dark oh this one's pretty dark beautiful let's go for that one and we're gonna open up with Photoshop there we go and now what we can do is this really nice trick which is called match color we can match the color with the other file and then see how that works out now in this case I don't think there's enough detail either in this file or in the other file to make it work what happens if we use this mask instead that's more like it that's that's what I like to see so let's fade this slightly we can neutralize it doesn't really do anything give it slightly less luminance there we go that is what I like to see and now we can save this again come on let's make that a little bit lower on the volume where is my save dialog what the f where is my save dialog don't don't ruin this video for me Okay, killing Photoshop, it's doing something weird. By Photoshop, thank you. And creating a new Photoshop. This Photoshop is named Bob. Bob was a lot better than Christopher, who was the previous Photoshop. So Bob is going to make this work. Alright, here we've got layers, albedo. Let's grab it in. We've got this little texture here. Let's grab it in adjustments match color textures there we go now what's really important is that uh, if you have another layer below the background it kind of uses the background layer only so make sure that you flatten if you made any changes before you do that match color because it only applies to the only uses the background safe as there we go granite dark albedo safe this was the window I was expecting. Thank you, Bob. Can't trust Christopher. Um, and now we need to change the type of file. And we can do that using this NVIDIA Textures Tools exporter. Um, and you can just, if you Google that, you can find that NVIDIA DDS Texture Tools. There we go. Make sure the link is in the video. And this allows you to uh, this standalone application would work fine if you don't have uh, the Photoshop plugin or if you're incapable of making the Photoshop plugin work, like me. Um, and the standalone application is fine. Uh, you do need a developer's account. You can make one. I would highly recommend you to make one with a temporary email so that you don't get spam. Uh, and here we need BC3, which is uh, DXT5. And then we can just drag in our little so here we go and now we go back to the map which is right there and here we call this granite albedo there we go and now we have the DDS version so let's do the same thing for the dark one granite albedo uh, dark albedo there we go and let's do the same thing for the normals Again, uh, DXT5 or BC3. And then here, save as granite underscore normals. So, and now if we go into our textures here and say we pick layer four 
And instead of going to the type here, we go to in map folder, we can now see the textures that we made. And you're gonna pull these in, there we go. And then texture five, we're gonna use the darker one with the same normals. Come on, drag those normals, thank you. Right, and now the editor is having a lot of issues being zoomed in. I don't know why that is. I think it is because of these custom textures. Uh, but they're not particularly high quality, so there's something weird happening with the editor. But that's fine, we can work with that. Uh, because what we can do now is start painting. Maybe we're V, we can change the strength, V, and then here the blue the green area where we have rocks right, we can use this little because you really want to use this for map readability and maybe we want this to be slightly bigger so that it looks less repetitive and now we can paint using the uh, darker brush the, the further away we actually get from the water but then the two brushes really blend in together really nicely because they are after all the same texture right so now if we would have an area oh yeah so this is really annoying with this editor there's a really annoying graphical bug that happens but uh, now if we would have this little brownish rock you can see that it transitions really nicely and one particular thing that we're interested in is this target value because that allows us to create the blend a lot more nicely just like that and now we have this really interesting blend where we're leaving the hot area and we're going back to the cold area. Right, that's pretty epic if you ask me. So let's continue our journey. Make sure that symmetry settings is on, otherwise you'll be painting and then you'll be painting the other side as well. Um, this is gonna be a bit more black. Uh, a, a few tips. Clicking is just painting. Uh, clicking and then alt clicking is removing it again so then we're depainting essentially and now we can just start painting up all of our little cliffs here and then use the alt key to tweak the uh, the looks and the feels here again B to make the brush size smaller there we go There we go, it's starting to look pretty good. And we're really using this to uh, help the player. This is, this is by all means, everything you're doing here, it may look nice, but you're helping the player understand the map. You're helping him understand that this is apparently a cliff so that he doesn't have to rotate his camera all around to read the map. Right, because very often there's going to be these very little uh, areas that are impathable, but it's very difficult for the player to see. But with these textures, you can help him understand and say, hey, look, if you see this texture, or the brown one, then you can consider that to be impathable, right? We're kind of matching it with this red that we're seeing here. We're just painting it all over it. Painting all over that map. And then tweaking it tiny bits and pieces. With our, uh, now I made a mistake here because I, uh, I completely forgot that this is actually supposed to be uh, a hot spring source, right? We kind of want the player to think that this is a hot area, so we're gonna need these, this different texture here. We kind of want the rock here to end with the dark texture. And we want it to start with the lighter texture, just like that. 
Right, just like that. And by blending textures like this, we can create really interesting effects, just like we're seeing right here, right? It's pretty, pretty good. Same thing there. Uh, let's continue our blending journey here. Just doing the rocks. Uh, this is a bit more tricky. There we go. Now, by all means, we're not really expecting the player to go down here. When the player does, then we just call him a try art. This should be very clear. It says, don't go there, please. It's not worth the trees. All right, that looks good. Now, you kind of want to take into account that latch here, right? So there is this little latch here that we don't want to paint across. Because that... Uh, Right, and the same thing on the on the lower end. We don't want to get too much into the uh, pathable stuff that we have. There we go. That's looking good. That's looking good. So we got these cliffs. We got these cliffs. We got these cliffs here at the back. I think we got all the cliffs here. Getting all the cliffs. That's how we roll. Let's add a tiny bit of darkness here so at places. So it's not going to be perfect by all means. That's not nature. It's not perfect like. All right. And, and from this point onwards, it's just really about adding in the features that in the, to the terrain with the textures that, that you think are interesting, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm painting this otherwise relatively monotone just by painting this here over it. There we go. To make it look like less monotone without making it look like we're trying to add in this black rock texture everywhere. And I think this this is where we're really going to start seeing some progress when we do this render. So let's do that render real quickly. Um, okay. I sort of forgot where we put those things. Uh, here, I think. Yeah. All right. So let's compare this with what we have. So it's going to be section underscore four. Preview underscore section zero four. There we go. Open with photos. This is what we started with. We added some markers. Try to reason about safe, expandable. Uh, readable and then contestable uh, resources. We had some tree groups where we did the same thing, where we really tried to think about what does it mean when we add trees here? What what does it tell the player to do? And now you can see that this is really, suddenly the readability of the map exploded, right? Oh, whoa, I can't pass this. I can't pass that. Uh, there's something different here too, right? The, the oasis is starting to slowly uh, show up. Um, and that really adds to the map. Now the map is readable when you're looking at the preview. That's really important. Uh, so that's uh, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be tackling all the other uh, terrain layers. And in particular, I'll be telling more about why I made certain choices. For example, why did I put the rocks at layer 5 and 4? Um, but that's all for our next video.